Alrighty, hello guys. I'm back here with another deck. We have Secret Boat uh, Rogue. So this is the deck list on the right here. Uh, a couple of preps, shadow steps. And we're just looking to tempo out of the game. So it does have quite a bit of reach if your opponent does heal a fair bit. The main combos that we want to look out for is... Um, Preparation into Shroud potentially on turn one if you have a secret and you've already got like a uh, coin four drop paired. Um, coin into Private Eye is like your best play in the game. Uh, sh you get the Shadow Step there. I mostly use it for Ghastly Gravedigger just to shrink their hand and reduce their answers to everything that I've got going on. Uh, it can also be used with Krabatoa or Mr. Smite, but mainly. Um, Smite or Ghastly I use it for. Um, we also have the, once you throw a Sunken Vessel into the bottom of your deck, um, you have the Mr. Smite into a Gone Fishing combo to dredge that back up, and then you get uh, 12, 12 attack in charge for 8 mana. So that's a pretty nice finisher, along with your Wicked Stabs, which also do 12 by the time you get to 10 mana. Oh... We got one serrated bone spike in here. It's mainly to enable private eye if you don't have the coin. If you have the coin, you should always um, turn three coin private eye. If you don't have that, hopefully you get the bone spike to help you combo it. Um, private eye is the best draw in the deck when you're doing your mulligan because it, it fishes two cards out of your deck and plays them for free. Um, and if one of those is a double cross, which most likely it will be, it's like four mana draw four because you've already pulled two. This will pull another two. You might be like, ah, oh, but what if they don't trigger it? They always trigger it. And if they don't, then after two turns of them not triggering it, it's already paid for itself. So it's worth, it's worth it either way. Um, obviously, looking at their secret list here, we don't actually run... Uh, kidnap because it's just terrible if it stopped the battle cries going off it would definitely have a spot but in its current state it's just it's just god awful so i be using that and we also have halkius uh, super good card and you can really do a lot of chaining chain combos with him since the aoe silence the three mana one got nerfed you don't see as many silence anymore. I think it's moved to four mana. That's why I can't find it in there. Where is it? There it is. Since this got nerfed, you don't see it as much. So Halkius ends up getting his death rattle off pretty often. And with the stealth especially, that really helps. So some good combos with Halkius is if you can kill him, kill him off but play sticky situation at the same time. When sticky triggers, then you kind of end up with a like eight attack charge. Because they have stealth, so they're not likely to die after they get, um, you know, resummoned. And then you get to attack on your turn, obviously. So that's a nice combo to have. If you're worried that they might clear it, like say you already have a pretty good board. And you're worried they're about to AoE you down. But you want to play Halkius anyway. Because you, you need to do something on your turn. Playing Halkius and then uh, Perjury is really nice. Because then... He 100% goes goes off at the end of the turn, and you can, um, you know, just reload him with another secret. So you, you know he's good for at least two or three turns. That's pretty much all the combos we're looking for. We got a theater just to kill those combo decks off. Oh, and I should mention we also run one by Sylvanas because I found with earlier versions of this deck we'd just get absolutely walloped. Especially by Druids, by an Insatiable Devourer. So I, I looked at a couple of options and I figured Sylvanas is the best one because it kills it either way. Um, and if we do have the benefit of the Infuse, then we get that counter lethal as well. So it's pretty nice. But yeah, that's the deck. I'll give you the stats at the end, how it went and some of the other versions I tried. So if you're thinking a card might work here, a card might work there. I've put a lot of work into this deck, so uh, I'll take you through all the versions real quick at the end. But enjoy the games. Thanks. All right. 
Let's get on with these games, eh? So first up here we have a rogue. We got a really nice start here. Preparation's always a keep, shroud's always a keep, and as I said in the intro, the private eye's the best draw in the game. So pretty nice start with this deck. I played a lot of versions to around five to ten games each. This is the what I believe to be the best version of it. I'm not doing my prep shroud on turn one because I don't really feel the the need to. There's no minions that I can no like two mana minions in the deck. My three mana minion I wouldn't play into a druid like that. So I'm just gonna hold on to it. Normally I would play a secret on two, but perjury is the only one that I wouldn't. Perjury is just a lot better with Halkius, so I'm gonna save it for that. And this also sets up a uh, a prep into perjury into private eye turn on this turn four. Nice. So that gets the double cross. So this is our um, this is our four mana draw four that I was talking about in the intro because the it got a double cross. And not only does it draw four, but it plays two of them, so. It's a pretty nice outcome. That's why it's the best card in the deck. Because now, like, the deck's just so thin. It has a surprising amount of pull. Ah, I shouldn't say pull, like card draw. You can get through it pretty quick, and often I'm at the back end of the deck very quickly. between two shrouds, two double crosses, two private eyes. If they line up, you can just go straight through. So we get rid of one of his spells. We get rid of the one that draws because we're trying to um we're trying to hold him down at the moment. We're getting pretty close to creating an overwhelming board. So as long as we can get rid of his card draw or his board clears. Uh, we should be good. I wish I could get rid of the Earthen Scales as well, because if he does play a big dude, uh, that might get me in trouble. Obviously, for the Perjury, I end up picking the new Hunter spell that does 6 damage to face if he plays 3 cards. Drew would love to play a lot of cards, so I think it's always kind of going to get value, and it's one of those really nice ones. Um, I really rate that secret, so... We're going to prep out our, our boat, and then we get a nice amount of mana to get Theotar with. There wasn't, there wasn't great options there for what I could take from him. I decided Brand probably gives him the most options, um, so taking that away felt pretty nice. Trying to decide what my weakest card is here. I know he doesn't really have a play, so it feels a little bit bad to give him Vessel, um, which... Gives him something to do on his turn, but I've got to give him something. So I'm going to hold the Wicked Stabs. We're not close enough to lethal that I can just throw them out willy-nilly, and I'm only two turns away from them doing six damage a pop, so we can just hold on to that. Played a low-cost card, so I think we might be able to get our secret triggered this turn. There's two. Come on, one more, and he plays it, nice, it was pretty good, he do definitely doesn't like that, we get another one, pick the exact same thing, now Halkius is down, super nice, Druid doesn't have a way to destroy that unless he has an infused Devourer, but we've had a pretty good look at his hand, pretty sure he doesn't have one, and if he does it wouldn't be infused, so... The taunt's a really awkward amount of health, but coming up on, on this turn, he really needs to heal, otherwise I got him. But, because of the secret, it pushes him into lethal range anyway, so we get the job done. Druid down. Would you not? Facing another druid. So hopefully this goes just as well. 
This guy's a, uh, a Renathal Druid as well. I have played the Aggro Druid two or three times with this deck. Um, and I, ca I can't really keep up with them. They do kind of stomp. This deck doesn't isn't great against wide uh, boards that get going early. It does have a lot of trouble. Um, it can stabilize. You'll see in a couple of these games, I lose control early, but I stabilize in the mid to late and end up having a pretty good game. Get our coin private eye. Absolutely beautiful. And we've got Halkius in hand as well. So you just see that we very, very quickly develop a real nice board with really threatening um, secrets. So Objection normally doesn't hit anything too great out of the uh, Druid. I was kind of hoping it might have hit Topia or something this turn, but they normally play around stuff like that pretty well. I do get an Oracle, which... I mean, it's better than nothing. I'm surprised he didn't throw his one drop into the into the dens there, but I guess he really wanted the charge. So I've got a pretty average turn here. I'm trying to figure out what I actually get with Shroud. It's, it's not much, so that was a pretty weak turn. We don't have a secret up from for Halkia, so we might just get cleared this turn. Turn 6 is normally a pretty strong play for this deck either way. Both my 6 drops are very good and it's kind of the turn where I can play because I have a lot of good 4 drops as well so I can play like a secret and a and a 4 drop or I can play one of my 6 drops. So as you can see we're, we're threatening, threatening lethal on turn 7 so it really needs to find some good answers here. Topiol is good, but without an Earthen Scales, he's kind of still in trouble. Yep, that does it. Alrighty. Next up, a mage. We'll see if this is a secret mage or a, um, like a skeleton spooky mage. Do have prep vessel, which is nice on turn three as well. It's one of the other combos along with shroud that preps in the deck for. Sometimes, if you don't draw your serrated bone spike, you might just use your your prep to play a secret, so then you can enable your private eye. I think he'd want to take frozen touch, but I thought he would take cold case just to throw me off, and so I got it wrong. But that would have been huge if I actually got the right the right call then. So I know that Secret Mage gets off to some pretty snowbally starts because I don't know if you've checked the YouTube channel, but I just made a video on that deck, so I'm, I'm kind of tracking what it what it likes to do. So I decided to use my serrated uh, Bone Spike early then just to take away some of the damage. So, especially when I don't have Private Eye in hand, there's no use getting greedy against a deck like this, so I kind of just have to be faster than it. So, turn 4 wasn't great there. I used my coin just to check for Counterspell, but now we know it's either a minion based, which this deck doesn't really have any throwaway minions. Like, there's no cheap stuff, so Objection feels really bad. To play against. Oasis Ally is the main one I'm playing playing against. I have the exact same train of thought on this thing. I was like, surely he's not gonna just sit on two frozen touches, but apparently he is, so he outplayed me both times. I'm gonna dredge and get my vessel because I don't have anything to, else to do this turn. And I know at least two of his cards are um frozen touch so he does have a fair bit of good clear but that's the benefit of everything in the deck pretty much being stealth that he can't use it real great so I'm still not really drawing too much now I can um, get my combo out 
private eye, but I'm pretty sure it's either explosive or objection. Turns out it's not either of them, so it would have been better to play private eye there, but I th like I, if it was objection, like I would have got punished, so still the right play either way. My dude has stealth, so I know he's going to hit for four. Well, odds are. Cool, there's only one secret in my deck, which is perjury, so I don't need to combo this. But I am going to throw a bunch of these ghastly ghouls at him to get rid of all of his uh, answers. I'm not too worried about the explosive rune or objection, because I don't think any of my minions are really going to stick from this stage, so I'm just going to rely on... My secrets that I've already got going up, and my weapon weapon hits. So we get a nice explosive trap. I know that that doesn't run any healing unless he gets those cold cases. So end up drawing lethal with the Krabatoa anyway. Krabatoa has saved me in this deck. I don't know how many times, but very very often. So another win in the bag. Cool. Up against a demon hunter here. Not a great opening hand. We do have the shroud, which is nice. There's no real point to um, prep it, but as soon as I draw drew the second one, then I knew I already had a turn three play, so I may as well uh, prep it. Cool. I think about playing Perjury, that's definitely the wrong play, it should be in Double Cross. Perjury's better with Halkius. So, turns out it's actually a Rogue. Get my secrets out and about, the old draw four. End up killing his prep with my counter spell, which isn't great, but it's something. These are some pretty terrible options as far as traps go. I guess snake's the only one I'll get any kind of benefit out of. I hate seeing Mida when I'm playing against Thief, uh, Thief Rogue. It's so reliable how often they get it. And it just hard carries the deck. It's a it's a huge high roll. Um, yep, I just get rid of his uh, trickster there to slow him down a fair bit. Hopefully that stops him from playing some absolutely ridiculous card. So get my dudes out. Halkius death rattle doesn't get saved, unfortunately. But we can push a fair bit of damage face here, so. Not doing too bad, even though they did get the mitre. I decided to prep double cross just because I'm not looking great as far as turns for. Uh, or like options for next turn, so I need to draw some more cards. Which is nice, I do get. I do get something. It brings bloody mitre back. Pretty annoying. I really want to get a vessel down because I have the combo of smite and gone fishing. So I want to, from next turn, I can do that to smash him for 12. So I'm just going to go face here. Hopefully he doesn't have a good way of, of clearing. Like I said, I do have 12 damage coming from hand. And that's a, that's a super good answer actually. That's pretty tough to beat. <laughs> And he gets his mitre off the top, super annoying. I figured I'm just going to push, try to out push him. Um, 
Shadow Step Smite, because now if I draw my other vessel, I can punch for another 12. I do have Smite Wicked Stab, which is 12 on its own. Like a cheap little Denathrius really kills me here. So I'm thinking about using Scabs, but he'd probably just replay Denathrius and I'm just in a world of hurt. So I kind of do have to kill it off. It sucks and he does get the Mitre heal, but there's no real other option there. So I was real close to lethal a couple of turns there. Now he's gonna heal back up, puts down another Mitre. This is criminal at this stage. So I think about using scabs, but I decide against it. I figured I want to burn a couple of these off before I start going for it. Interesting choice. Test does get him a miter and a couple other things. I'll give him a little snake in return. I think that's a pretty good trade. So now that a lot of things are burnt off, I think I do have some pretty good uh, scabs play, or like a good scab turn coming up. Really sucks to see that weapon. That's a lot of damage coming my way. Good. A bit of a tough turn. I'm trying to think it through. End up deciding not to wait around and just pushing a bit more face. We'll get the vessel when we get it, but I, I can't just keep holding on, so. And unfortunately, he does finish me off, so. Not as lucky on that one. Alright, moving on with the next game. We got a shaman. These aren't too common around the parts, but. Should be interesting, whether it's control or totem. Because he only has 30 health, I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty aggressive deck, so... These are the decks that I traditionally struggle against with this one. Um, just because our early turns are sometimes a bit weak. Super happy to see Searing Totem was pretty much the only one that I could kill. So, I think I high rolled a little bit, or he low rolled, I guess, is probably a better way to say that. Yeah, play sticky, we don't really have another choice. Playing the three drops, like the ghastly is a waste, because... Aggro decks traditionally don't have a lot of cards in hand, because they're playing them. So, if I can get rid of one of his key cards later, then it's a lot more beneficial for me. So I've got Halkius down, but I don't have any secrets or any ways to get secrets at the moment. So turn five is looking a bit rough for me. So normally I want to save the Gorn Fishing for Smite, but in a situation like this, I just need to play something. I believe dudes are better to play than uh, cards, so I pick a uh, sticky situation over double cross. Especially because I have a 6 and a 7 and an 8 turn already. I don't really need the cards because my turns are kind of laid out already. I choose to get rid of the Wild Pork Cavern because that's a bit more difficult for me to deal with. That constant board pressure. And if he does play Famished Full, it's a turn... It's kind of like a, a, a shit turn for him where I can regain control of the board. Which is exactly what happens. I throw my Halkius into a secret. Um, sticky situations, which means when he does pop out, I've got 8 attack on the board, so combine that with Smite, I've got pretty much 14 from hand if he plays a, uh, a spell. I'm trying to decide between what I want to do. I end up just dropping Smite. It's, like I said, it's, it's just so much pressure right now that it should be okay to stick, I hope. Plays a spell, you know what that means. Bang, bang. I think he played around that pretty poorly at the end there, but... We got him. Alright, what's our next game? What are we going into here? Priest. 
I would have thought that this deck would have a really poor matchup against Quest Priest in particular. But I've actually had pretty decent results. This is a um a very trash hand though. But I guess that means if this is a trash trash hand, then every drawer is gonna be good, right? More or less? Surely. Get the double cross for the turn two. It took me a while to figure out how to play this deck properly, but pretty much if you draw a, if you draw a secret on turn two, you should just play it. I thought about like holding it for weird Halkius turns or whatever, but the only one I would hold is Perjury. Getting double cross on turn two, it's just too hard for them to play around it. Likewise with sticky situation, two mana, three, four with charge is pretty good. So we get our um, private eye out and about. Use serrated, serrated Dirk as well just to clear the poison just so hopefully I can get a minion to stick. So all these options are very bad. Emergency Maneuvers on Halkius is actually really good though, if I can get it off. I don't think I will, I think he'll kill the Private Eye, but... We've got our Boat Smite into Gorn Fishing combo as well, which is super good. Unfortunately for us, he's playing uh, super on curve right now. I believe on that turn I was thinking about... Coin, uh, sorry, Prep. Vessel into Gorn Fishing to drop a bunch of dudes on the board Because I do have the other vessel for smite later on and the other Gorn Fishing I decide not to because I think if I get cleared, it's just a bit too brutal for me Turns out pretty good thinking it would have destroyed me and He's got a real nice board for me to clear with uh, Krabatoa now so. Decide to ignore the little 2-2 Halkius is undefended, but I couldn't really uh, defend it any good way, so. He has stalled out. It looks like he's having a lot of trouble finding his 6 drop, which is nice for me. Bit of a weaker turn here. There's nothing great. I do predict the secret correctly which is nice and it does die to my weapon which is <laughs> doubly nice so now thinking between my options something's always good because it does pull another card with it it does clear but it's not great I still have a lot of damage on board I still also have smite with the wicked stab which is a fair bit of damage I do need to get this boat down at some stage, so I use this turn to grab it. Thin my deck a little bit more with my private eye. And start swinging face. I was deciding between whether I want to clear that or not, but I figured if I clear it, he's going to AoE the board anyway, so I may as well just send it face and get a few more damage in. Again, not great answers, but at least the um, Galloping Saviour gives me a, a body on board. Next turn, both Wicked Stabs would develop, so this is a great turn to do the Smite combo. Push for 12, and then I've got 12 damage in hand next turn. Thought I may as well Shadow Step Smite. I'm not really going to use it on anything else. He's not even close to completing his quest, so the Ghastly doesn't really have much value right now. Even though he does have a lack of cards, but it's better off being used for a um, lethal push. So he held on for a pretty good while there. Like he did hit his 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on curve, but we still got the better of him. Sweet. Paladin now. Paladins are tricky if they get off to a really good start, especially with this um, C4 Savior, is it? There it is. That card can snowball pretty hard. We get a pretty nice 
Uh, secret for my two drop as well though, which is nice. It doesn't go off unfortunately, but we do have our all important coin private eye. And we got Halkius there as well. Hopefully we can get some Halkius chains going. Get a bit more value out of him. Couple of options. Avenger is really good to when you're still like jousting for the board. Getting that um, extra buff can really be the difference that pushes you over the top. Doesn't really work out here because he has a, uh, a taunt in the way. But we don't really have anything good to do on, on turn 5. So we're probably just going to... I definitely want to uh, hero power to clear it. Now I thought about prepping the shroud there. But again it's one of those I'd have 2 spare mana and I don't have any 2 drop minions. So it wouldn't actually matter. So I may as well just play it with all 3 mana and save the prep for something else. Cool, he eats all its stats. Doesn't worry me too much because it is just going to come back in a little bit. Plays a pretty big dude. Big taunts are very hard for me to get around. I think about counter spell, but... I decide on the Hunter one because he hasn't played Carriel yet. And there's still a bit of time. And I'm hoping that I can hit the 6 damage in before Carriel drops. Because you want to push as much damage early as you can against uh, Paladin. Because once he um, you know, effectively doubles his health, it's, it's very hard to chop him down from there. He has a real nice turn, but I kind of top deck my answer here, so unlucky for him. Do I feel bad about it? Absolutely not. Thought about whether I want to trade these off or not but I don't think he has a lot of buffs and I they're still torn so he's gonna have to trade into him either way so I thought I'd just again push damage phase while he doesn't have carryall heals eight which absolutely sucks starts trading things off which makes me uh, think that I made the right choice and he played all three which again is some more damage face I think about playing scabs again, but I can push a little bit more damage on this exact turn. The problem, however, is that it also gave him lethal because of Avenge. So I did end up having a trade off anyway. So it probably would have, well, not probably, it would have been better to play scabs there. Gets the Countess, but he absolutely should not have played that spell. Because now I get my 8, eight damage charge. And I've got, I've got Smite in hand, so... He kind of just wrecks himself. Poor fella. Should have just played Countess and Hero Powered, but... Anyway, we got him. Feels good, Halky is put in the work. Got another Priest. Always tricky. Alright, so how does this priest go? Again, we've got a bit of a slow hand, but we do have Halkius, which is nice. He's playing some kind of thief version. And this is one of those dangerous matchups because I don't really don't really have an answer for these early snowballing boards. And now I'm super confused as to what he's playing because I don't really see this at all, where it's like a thief. But it's also got the Naga wig package. And him having the wig on a 40 card deck. He's just curving out pretty hard right now. Pretty scary. I figured if I can get to turn 6 and get my Kravitoa, I might be okay. And if I get to turn 8, I'd be very confident to just bounce all this stuff back. Halkis is nice. Hopefully we get a spell. So we can activate him and keep using him to bash these things down. But he's pounding on us pretty hard right now, so...
Don't really get anything, so we decide I'm just gonna use the sunken early. Just because we really need a fight for this board. I can't just get like value is just not an option right now. We just have to survive. And it looks like we're gonna get a turn to survive and play my Krabatoa. Which we don't have a lot of a lot of health to play with, but we do we do have something. Cool, we eat an extra two. So we're down to three, but priest decks don't have any way to do face damage unless they steal it or they play Alex Straza for some weird reason. Pretty sure I'm going to be okay sitting on this. But also in saying that, playing scabs as early as I can is pretty uh, pretty important. So I decided not to combo Private Eye just so I can try to get rid of their wig. I don't end up hitting it. But Lyra is a pretty good discard as well, so pretty happy with that. He has a lot of cards. He probably could have cycled on me pretty hard. Now finally stabilized on the board. It's time to start doing damage to him, hopefully. Both wicked stabs in hand. Uh, sets me up pretty good for a turn 10 lethal push. I don't really want to give him too much stuff back in his hand, but I do really want to get scabs down. Because it also gives me the 4-2 the bodies as well, which is super nice. So we decided to just do it here, even though it gives him a really good draw card. Often if the enemy takes a turn to draw, it's enough for me to get ahead. So, more stealth dudes. Stealth dudes everywhere. And because they're little dudes, the enemy feels really bad about playing their board clears into it. So I noticed that a lot of the time they do just end up connecting face. Looks like we're going to get another Krabatoa turn, which is super cool. Kind of hoping that we get a um, another vessel sometime soon as well, because a vessel means that uh, our Mr. Smite can do his Mr. Smite go on fishing combo. Cool. We get the Private Eye, thin the deck out. Private Eye is such a good card, I can't state that enough. If only uh, Rogue had maybe one or two more secrets that were good. Honestly, it's just Kidnap. If Kidnap was just a little bit better, it'd be insane. Because you'd combo it every time. Looks like he doesn't have any kind of board clear, so we might just go through right here on turn, turn 10 with our two Wicked Stabs. Pretty nice, I guess he didn't expect to die from that health. Got him. Alrighty. This is the last game of the video. Up against Paladin again. Very tricky if they get off to a good start. This is a really good opening hand for me though. The only thing that would uh, make it better would be a private eye. Do you have our prep? We have our two drop. Trying to decide whether I want to do this or prep the vessel on for. But we do draw the private eye with the shroud, which is one of the things I was considering. Like, what if we do get the private eye? It's obviously better than Halkius. We get our one drop, we get our two drop, we get our coin into the four drop, into Halkius. It's a really nice curve. And then we got five and six as well, so. We've got a super nice curve coming up. We get double cross, so we get the old four mana draw four.
It does have Benamin though, which is pretty scary. And he's playing the mech variant, which means they don't have a lot of spells, so my sticky situations probably isn't going to go off a lot of the time. The only one that really makes sense is Explosive Trap. You can play around it pretty pretty easily. But it is what it is. I'm trying to decide between Scuttlebutt Ghoul or Halkius here. I think the Scuttlebutt Ghoul is more of a um a speed hump, but it doesn't it kinda of just delays the situation, but this Halkius is something that I can especially with prep and uh Perdry, I can uh, start value value trading off a lot and getting um, getting multiple Halkiuses on board because I don't think he has a silence. So it does trigger the trap, which means I probably need to prep my Perdry this turn, just so Halkius has something to run away into. I decided to play the ghoul over the over the boat this turn because it just trades off a lot better versus what he has. And it protects the face, obviously, which is all important. Now I figure this next turn is gonna be the big clear turn with Krabatoa and Halkius into a into a secret. I hate to see the bubble bot. It's one of those feels real bad cards, but Especially Divine Shields is kind of awkward for what I'm going to do next turn with Krabatoa, so... A couple options, but getting a nice healthy dude feels really good. I can pretty much sink his whole hand here if I want to. Or I can go the uh, Krabatoa and try to clear stuff. I decide we're sinking hands and that's... A really good one to sink. <laughs> and that's again a really good one to sink. So a 6-6 six, six saviour and then a 5-5 five, five saviour. I just saved myself so much health. It's crazy. So he'd be feeling filthy about that. I'm a little bit upset. I've used one gone fishing just then, and I have a boat in hand, but I see that Smite's on the bottom of the deck, so that's just a combo that's just simply not going to happen this game. Gets another bubble bot. Super annoying. Get rid of another card. This is where the Ghastly Ghouls, or Ghastly Gravediggers coming in handy. You can see just how much I've put him in a really shit spot. And I've taken away so much of his tempo. It's such a good game to showcase that effect. I'm still very worried about Carriol, but I'm not sure if he runs it in this deck. I'm just hoping he kind of ends up running dry and only having to use like half his mana every turn. And start cleaning up the board now. It's finally a half decent turn to play Krabatoa. I've been waiting. Then I actually trade very poorly there. I could have kept the Ghastly Gravedigger alive and sacked one of my uh, Krabbock Toll Claws into that 3-4, but I kind of rushed the turn a little bit. Pretty bad turn to see that come out of his end. It's something that I definitely don't have answers for, and I definitely don't have lethal push right now, so it's kind of the worst of both worlds. But our top deck scabs, which is pretty much the only card that can actually deal with this. Decide to attack because with what he's got, I'm, I'm never going to hit one of his dudes again. I need to start saving my health. He's 
He's not playing any of his good stuff. He's just kind of playing all his trash, which works out for me. Because I'm sitting on theater, so at this stage I'm thinking like, hmm, might be able to get myself a, uh, a Leviathan, hopefully. Don't end up hitting the Leviathan, but I do get Zola, which gives me another chance at it. I decided to give him Sylvanas because I don't think I'm actually going to use it this game, and he can't really do anything with it. So you end up pinching the Leviathan, super good. And we do have a Wicked Stab in hand, so we got a surprise 6 damage. Feeling pretty good, he doesn't have great trades here, like hopefully something does stick, but... And if we get a nice top deck of another Wicked Stab, we might actually have uh, lethal pressure. So yeah, he plays a spell, big mistake, what does that mean? 8 damage on the board. That wraps up the game. Especially when we draw that, but we had it before that. Anyway, that's that. How good. Alright, now that the uh, games are done, I'll reveal the results. So I end up going 12 and 8 over 20 games. I played one extra just to get a thumbnail. Turns out I won that as well, so pretty happy. Um... Obviously, good performance. Didn't come up against Hunter, so that matchup, we'll just have to see how it's like. I did play it with the other versions. Uh, going back through the other versions to see uh, what I did try. Initially, it was the 40-card Renathal, Maestra, Wildpaw Knoll, uh, a bit more secret packages in there. Look, it, did, it didn't go too bad. 4 and 3 is okay, but the, Prince, the big version with the Prince Renathal... Uh, is that it's just not as consistent. So we changed some cards around for the first couple of times, end up discovering that Private Eye should definitely be a two of, um, but it's still just a bit too big, a bit too inconsistent. So the version two, we shrink it down. We take out the Prince Renathal, but we still have the Null Maestro package. And that's, that's something that took me a while to get rid of, but the... Kind of keeping a secret, just like reducing the Knolls and like the Thief package and stuff. That's more value orientated decks where you want to kind of drag things out and get value off those cards. But what this deck really wants to do is just tempo in and get uh, mana discounts and sticky minions and get things that way. So the two kind of clash in quite a bad way and it just took me quite a while to figure that out. So eventually it gets taken out. This version 3, I tried to put in some early minions to try to win those um, more aggressive early game uh, matchups because I found this is when I'm starting to dis discover that the null package isn't great and I'm just getting rolled over on the early turn. So I tried to patch that up with some early minions, but this version didn't feel too great either. Version 4, that's not a very good one because it doesn't even have Renathal. Here we go, Renathal's back in. We try to speed up the Null process by putting in Tooth and Nefarians, so that way I can just play my 2-drops. But I still have these like awful 1-drops that are just annoying to fit in. It's not a very smooth deck. And because it was drawing out, I end up adding Mutanus, which like, why is Mutanus in this deck? You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> So it took me a while, and I janked things around slightly. Look, nothing nothing really big come out of this. This is big game hunters in this one because I'm starting to realize that um, I'm getting swamped by that Devourer, which ended up getting swapped out for a uh, Sylvanas. And then this is nearing the final, the final version of the deck. There's only a one-card change from here. This one did go 0-3, but... We end up swapping blood in the water because I've got enough things to do on six. I don't need this six drop. Uh, we end up swapping that for a serrated bone spike. So, um, yeah, obviously the bone spike works really good. The weakest cards in this deck is probably the shadow steps, followed by maybe the boat package. If you're looking to throw in some other kind of package, it obviously does have very good 
hard draw, so you can get through the deck quickly. So if you want to spice things up and maybe try a slightly different version that's less reliant on the the boat package, I'd probably recommend some kind of like spell power package with maybe Sinister Strikes and Garotes because you do get through your deck pretty quickly and it is guaranteed damage so it can all add up in the end but you will lack the board presence so maybe it makes some matchups tougher maybe some easier I don't know maybe I'll give it a, a go in the future but yeah anyway thanks for watching the video I appreciate it as always and everyone have a good day